Through 12 games, the Robert Morris University Colonial Hockey Team is 9-3, 7-1 in Atlantic hockey play, but it hasn't always been easy, and it wasn't on Thursday night. We'll see what it's like tonight in a rematch against Niagara. He didn't influence that play at all. But Somebody tell him where our camera is. Yeah. Move over a little bit. Help us out a little bit. Deflection, and it's in. A goal for Kyler Head, one to nothing. Colonials, there's a fuss at the Ag Hall. RMU takes the lead on a deflected shot by Kyler Head, and that is going to be the first goal for the freshman as an RMU Colonial. Yeah, we just set up. So first point for Cam Ebert, first goal for Kyler Head. Shot to score off the faceoff. Justin Kendall, after a faceoff win by Niagara, had all kinds of time and space, and he buried it one to one. Eagles quickly tie it up. Yeah, Colonial's getting overwhelmed there. Niagara just winning the faceoff forward and moving the puck uh, right to left uh, quicker than Noah West could move left to right. And that was uh, an open all over Grant e. Bear on that one. And uh, Purple Eagles tied at one. For Kendall, first goal of his senior season. Long shot, kick, rebound, shot goes in. Great effort on the follow there as the Colonials get the league right back. Another freshman, David LaFrance, another first goal, and the Colonials back in front, two to one. I could donk all day, boys. Colonials in the lead again. Viva LaFrance, Tim. Uh, the Colonials uh, getting another one from a blue liner not named Nick Jenny. They Love to get the band back together again, Tim. <laughs> Uh-oh, now Kramer goes down to heap. He was tied up with Stanley again. Shot comes in, score! Second one of the game for Justin Kendall, and Derek Schooley is beside himself. Because it started with a neutral zone turnover, a soft pass off the boards. Uh, not a play you want to make, a sideways play in the neutral zone instead of getting the puck going down the ice and the Colonials pay the price. And it wasn't Kramer, it was Jenny who was hurt. And I think that's why Derek Schooley is upset. And they're going to take another look at this one. And you can see Jenny, oh, the puck was so far away that it had nothing to do with the play, and Stanley laid him out. Boy, I didn't see that at all. And then it turns into the scoring chance the other way, and Kendall scores to make it 2-2, two to two, but Jenny just got cold cocked. Watch this here. Yeah. But here's the turnover. It's Adamo just kind of soft backhanding it sideways. You can't do that. Jenny's already wiped out. Look at, the, look at how far away the puck is, and Stanley just levels him. Now, this would be ironic, right? If the, they can't go and take the goal off the board for this, can they? Can they go back and take the A fanned pass from Brian Kramer. Spellacy looks over his shoulder. Well, Niagara just dumping it deep every chance it gets and then going to work. Shot score. Oh, it sat out there forever. And eventually it was elevated into the net by Ludwig Stenland. And it's 3-2 to two, Niagara. Then the same kind of play. Niagara dumping it in, uh, getting it below the Colonials goal line, and then going back and getting it. Uh, the Purple Eagles uh, just a step faster than RMU in this, uh, really, this entire period. Or played eight minutes of it. And a shorthanded chance coming up right now for Niagara. Jenny getting back on defense. Shot. Oh, and it went over West. He misplayed it. Gorshak with the goal. The Jeanette product scores, and it's 4-2 to two on the shorty, and either... West lost it, or it was a changeup, but it, he made a move to try to stop it, then pulled his glove down and went over his head. Yeah, it looked like a knuckle puck coming in. I don't know if uh, Gorsak. Guerra to Lawson, 22 to 23, and now comes back over to Brian Kramer. He'll scoot it down the ice and get off for a change. Pass in front, shot to score from Perkusik. The Colonial's still alive. They pull within one, it's four to three. Nick Perkusik, his 15th point on the year and his fourth goal. Colonials within one, kiss the sun and fight the fire. They're not done yet. Yeah, a little life. The Colonials finally beating Niagara back up the ice. And uh, who would it be? Of course, it would be Randy Hernandez, who got to the puck uh, just at the goal line and fired it across. Keep his balance. So 118 left to go. Tense moments for both teams there. Approach the 60 second mark, and the Colonials need one more. Now Luke Meyer comes yeah. out. Perkusik shot goes way wide of Corson. Perkusik behind the cage into the corner. Hernandez wants it, shoots it. It's in! Randy Hernandez has tied it with a minute left to go. Figure it out. Somebody ought to write a letter. Randy Hernandez knocks it up, and the Colonials have stormed back to even it up in four piece. 
what a turnaround as uh, Luke Smart came off and Spelsey came on and Spelsey kind of skated through the play, but Hernandez just let it rip uh, from uh, between the circles out high and the uh, new hockey game at 4-4. Trying to feather a pass to Spelsey, it's knocked down. Kramer able to get it back as he hung with the play as Carter Rancliffe was snooping. Now Spelsey, two on one if they can hurry with Kramer. Spelsey back in four and shot, score! A game winner for Aiden Spelsey. Leave the lights on at the ground round. Colonials win a huge comeback in the third and overtime. RMU stays hot and bumps the winning streak to five. Well, you might say they stole a point there, Tim. I think they stole two. And this is a game that the Colonials were leading after 40 minutes, but uh, basically the first uh, 14 minutes or so of the third period, a disaster, but the night ends with this a two on one and Spellacy uh, using Brian Kramer as a decoy. The defenseman playing pass as you're supposed to do and Spellacy gets a